Welcome to the most challenging week of my solo UK trip. Wales, the land of dragons. In this vlog, I will walk you through my journey across three cities, Swansea, Cardiff, and Conwy. From admiring historic castles to indulging in delicious vegan food, it wasn't all smooth sailing. It's my last night in Cardiff. I'm crying now because something scary happened. I also hit some emotional lows that made me regret coming to Wales. Here is how it all unfolded. And stick around until the end to find out how much it all cost me. If you're new to my channel, my name is Andrea. I'm a vegan foodie traveler. I begin my journey to Wales with a train ride from Bath to Swansea. Please don't ask me why I chose Swansea, because honestly, I'm not even sure why I decided to stop by this city. But the real reason I'm visiting Wales, it's because my YouTube crush, Connor aka SeaDogVA, from my all-time favorite podcast, Trash Taste, is Welsh. That's it. Literally the only reason. <laughs> I'm staying at Premier Inn again, the same budget hotel chain where I stayed at during my trip to Bristol. Simple and comfortable. I just got to Swansea, so now I'm just gonna wander around the hotel and then have dinner at this Chinese restaurant. Swansea is Wales' second largest city, with a population of around 246,000. I find this tortilla-looking golden bridge amusing. Turns out, it's a relatively new landmark from Swansea's 135 million pounds regeneration plan in 2021. Now I kind of regret why I didn't think to walk across it. It feels so random that I'm here in this random city that no tourist visit. I've been wandering around aimlessly waiting for this Chinese restaurant to open for dinner. The overly Chinese decor here makes you feel like you're entering a theme park. They offer a separate vegan menu. I ordered the deep-fried appetizer platter with dumplings, tofu bags, spring rolls, samosas, and crispy seaweed. For the main dish, I go for a Sichuan-style bean curd with dry chilies and peanuts. Everything tastes authentic and satisfying. At the end of the meal, they give me fortune cookie, some chocolate, and even a tassel in my favorite color. A cheerful letter or message is on its way to you. After dinner, I continue strolling aimlessly around Marina Park, taking in the quiet and boring atmosphere. And that's it for my first day in Wales. I begin my second day at this lovely vegan coffee shop that doubles as a surf shop. I love the cozy interior and the super friendly owner. Their hot matcha latte is the perfect drink to kick off the morning. Their breakfast wrap is filled with sausage, bacon, mushroom, spinach, cheese, and brown sauce. So hearty and filling. I also grab an oat latte to go. Wow. My goal for today is to walk all the way to Mumbles Pier, with some sightseeing stops along the way. I'm just walking alone at the Botanical Garden. It's free. I've been in Swansea for a night only, and I didn't do much yesterday, only ate dinner and then walked around the Marina Bay. So far, I find Swansea boring. Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind when I visit Mumbles Pier. You can find these really cool wood carvings and sculptures scattered around the park. What a magical fusion of art and nature. Just listening to Trash Taste podcast while walking around the garden. It's so peaceful. Boring but peaceful. I'm here at Klein Gardens, which is known as one of the best kept park all year round with serene and picturesque surroundings. There's a Japanese bridge here. I wish I'm in Japan at this moment instead of Wales. Next, I finally make it to a major sightseeing spot, Oyster Mouth Castle. This is the first medieval castle I ever stepped foot in. Situated majestically in the hill of Mumbles, this castle dates all the way back to 12th century. The standard entry ticket costs six pounds. The place feels full of history with its old stone walls and incredible views of Swansea Bay. The castle was originally built by the Normans as part of their efforts to control the Gower Peninsula. Over the centuries, the castle endured multiple attacks and restorations. By the 14th century, it was gradually abandoned and fell into ruin. 
Today, it is known for its striking medieval architecture and continues to undergo specialist conservation work. What I personally find most intriguing is the fact that it is known as a haunted castle. Now, I'm walking towards the dungeon, where prisoners were once whipped to death. The infamous Lady in White is said to haunt the castle ground, wearing a white robe with her back exposed, showing bleeding wounds. Some believe she was a servant who met her end in the dungeon. I feel a bit spooked. According to legend, if you listen closely, you might even hear her cries and wails. After walking all morning, it is time for lunch. Just five minutes walk away from the castle, there's this healthy vegetarian cafe serving plenty of vegan and gluten-free options. This is my third cup of caffeine today. This dish is called the Magic Mushroom Bowl, so of course I have to try it. It's miso and maple glazed mushrooms served over herbed rice with other good stuff. Then, after another half hour walk, I finally make it to my goal of today, Mumbles Pier. And it's not what I expected at all. This has got to be the least appealing beach I've ever seen in my life. I do appreciate the crochet art on display though. It gives the pier a bit of charm, making it look more lively and cutesy. And from here, I take an hour bus ride back to my starting point, the city center. I know I haven't said the nicest things about Swansea, but one thing I really do love is how easy it is to find vegan food I can trust, since everything I had so far has been nothing but delicious. Completely exhausted from all the walking, I decide to have dinner at a Wagamama near my hotel. It's my first time dining here. I don't expect much from the vegan options at a big chain. I am impressed by these sticky vegan ribs made of mushroom and soy protein. So tender and flavorful. I'm leaving Swansea today, so I make one last stop at my number one favorite vegan cafe. I'm going all out for my final meal, so I ordered two dishes. Out of the three dishes I've tried, I love their stuffed croissant the most. It's perfectly flaky. Then I walk over to the station and never look back again. Less than an hour train ride later, I arrive in Cardiff, the bustling capital of Wales. I booked this cheap two-star hotel right on the main commercial street, just a six-minute walk from the station. I didn't expect the long staircase at the entrance. But luckily, the lovely couple who runs the hotel switched my room to the first floor so I wouldn't have to deal with more stairs. The room itself is decent and clean. That stairs tired me out. My luggage is over 20 kilograms. Oh, I need to rest a bit. I ordered food delivery, so this is prawn toast. Vegan chicken fried rice and fried squid from In Cafe. After getting enough rest and having dinner, I head out to explore the night scene of Cardiff. This is a major shift from the quiet and boring beach town vibes of Swansea, with a population of around 370,000. That is over 100,000 more than Swansea. The city blends medieval charm with modern attractions. It's also a key hub for Welsh politics, entertainment, and sports, especially rugby. So that's my chill first night here. An eventful day ahead awaits me. First on today's itinerary is Cardiff Castle. The first thing I notice is the animal wall. A nobleman who inherited the castle in the 19th century had a vision for a major gothic makeover. That's when the animal wall was created. The history of the castle dates back to the 3rd century when it started off as a Roman fort and later evolved into a medieval fortress under Norman rule. Over the years, it has seen many transformations and became a symbol of wealth and power for various noble families. 
The intricate decor inside the luxurious castle apartments are absolutely stunning. From the grand ceilings to the elaborate carvings, every corner feels like a masterpiece. They offer a guided tour as well. If you visit during summer, you can even go up the clock tower. This is the original part of the castle, the Norman Keep. It was used as both a military stronghold and a defense tower, offering a strategic view over the surrounding area. Even though it's mostly ruins now, climbing those old stairs give you a sense of the castle's layered history. Wartime shelter. I'm kind of scared. What I find most fascinating are the air raid shelters built within the tunnels of the castle walls during World War II. They're filled with propaganda posters and haunting sound effects, creating an atmosphere that gives you a glimpse into that period of time. During the Blitz, a series of heavy bombing raids carried out by the Nazi over British cities, Cardiff was heavily affected. It's surreal to think that these tunnels became a lifeline for people during one of the most intense periods of the war. Why is there no one here? It's sad that even though we are in a relatively more peaceful era, human conflict persists and war still happens. There's so much to see here that you could easily spend half a day exploring. By now, it is past my usual lunch time and I'm starving. So I quickly skim through the museum at the basement. Overall, Cardiff Castle is definitely worth a visit. Next, I head to this plant-based cafe and eco shop that gives off those Bali Ubud vibes. I order a chai latte and a thali, which is an Indian platter with rice and a variety of small dishes. Everything is flavorful and delicious. You can feel the love and spiritual consciousness in each bite. On to the next tourist spot, National Museum Cardiff. Free admission. I'm especially impressed by the gallery here, with its awesome collection of contemporary art and Monet masterpieces. After a chill coffee break, I set off for an hour walk to this cathedral I don't know how to pronounce the name of. Some sources say it's Shanda, and some say it's Fanda. Let me know which one is correct. This cathedral is remarkable for its gothic design and its history that dates back to the 6th century. What makes it special is the Christ in Majesty, a striking modern sculpture that stands as a centerpiece. I don't understand why bus stop here. You're not facing the bus, but you face inside. I hop on the bus and head towards Roth Park. When I get off, I spot this cafe with dog friendly, written in letters much larger than its name. Of course, I must support it. So I pop in for a refreshing iced soy latte. Then I take a stroll around Roth Park. It has a rose garden, lush trees, and a 30-acre man-made lake in the center of the park. This park is the perfect place to sit on the grass feel like a local, and soak in the laid-back atmosphere of the city. Now I'm having dinner at Cardiff's award-winning, first-ever fully vegan restaurant. I ordered their donor bowl and crispy tofu with sweet pecking sauce. Oh my gosh, every bite feels so healing. They truly live up to their reputation. Just as I'm starting to feel like I'm warming up to Wales, a horrible encounter hits me and makes me want to end my journey here. So it's my last night in Cardiff. I'm crying now because something scary happened. So I wanted to head towards the bay to catch the sunset on my last night here. The hotel is located on a very crowded, busy pub street. So when I was walking out, I had my AirPods on and this guy, suddenly walked in front of me and yelled konnichiwa really aggressively. I avoided eye contact, I had my airpods on so I pretended not to hear it and I kept on walking. 
As I'm about to cross the street towards a quieter block, my peripheral vision noticed he kept following me. So I was so scared. I just turn back, head back to the crowd, and rush back to my hotel. I'm crying because it sucks. Like moments like that, I really don't know what to do. <sighs> I'm in a foreign country. I'm a minority. I'm a girl. It just sucks, you know. I just want to travel safely. <sighs> moments like this makes me feel unsafe, and I hate it. <sighs> I just I can't even see the last sunset in Cardiff. What happened last night really messed me up. And it's got me feeling so paranoid now, even during daytime. I'm hopping on a six hour train ride, including one transfer to Conway. At this point, I'm not looking forward to it at all. I just want to be home cuddling my dogs in a safe space, instead of dragging a heavy suitcase around and feeling unsafe in a foreign country. My adventure spirit has been completely turned off. I think the hotel is near the train station. I am exhausted. From all the fucking stairs. <sighs> Fuck. The room is nice though, but I wanna cry. Oh gee. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This is my hotel room. It's a four-star hotel, but I'm not in a good mood. <sighs> so first in the morning, I missed the train. It just changed platform last minute. I was on the train with my AirPods on listening to music, so I didn't hear the announcement. So I had to spend 55 pounds more to buy another train that is like two hours later. Yeah, so I waited at the train station for two hours and the train is shit. Transport for Wales, it has no AC and no space to put big luggage. It's like the worst train ride ever. Once I got to Conway station, I had to drag my 20 kilo luggage up the stairs. Good thing the hotel was nearby, only like one minute walk from the station. But this hotel does not have a lift, an elevator. <sighs> Good thing there was someone to help me to drag the luggage up, but it was still really, really tough. Anyway, I'm like kind of regretting my decisions now. Ever since I got to Wales, <laughs> things just started going downhill. Like first Swansea is boring as fuck, and Cardiff I experienced racism and now can't we no fucking elevators fuck i'm eating chocolate to calm myself down i ate over 3000 calories worth of chocolate and now i'm going to have vegan junk food for dinner i'm just not in a good mood i need food despite being on the brink of breaking down at least there's this pub with a fully vegan junk food menu. Exactly what I need right now. Look at this hearty plate of nachos. I'm loving the melty vegan cheese. It's got that perfect gooey texture. Definitely helping lift my mood a little. So, my first impression of Conway is that it feels like I've traveled back in time. Completely different vibes from Swansea and Cardiff. It's a quiet, historic castle town with half the population of Swansea. Okay, so seeing the exterior of the castle alone kind of makes up for the shit that I went through. It's really majestic. I can't wait to explore inside tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a good day. Gotta be optimistic. There's a horse right there. For the rest of the evening, I'm just going to wander around the town aimlessly. This little angel shows up to cheer me up. I feel like it's telling me everything is gonna be okay. I am very grateful to have friends I can vent to about all my frustrating encounters so far. But they could only comfort me from a distance. 
In the end, the only person I can truly rely on to keep moving forward is myself. I keep having this inner battle of wanting to just stay in my hotel room. Since I'm only staying two nights in this small town, I might as well force myself to make the most out of it. This evening walk turns out to be quite therapeutic, especially hiking along the town walls. This is quite a hike, but the view is nice. I'm exhausted. The town walls are a key historical feature, built in the 13th century as defense fortifications. I think that's gotta be the top. The panoramic view of the town's medieval layout and surrounding landscapes from up here is incredibly rewarding. The end is over there. Whenever you're feeling stressed out, taking a walk might help clear your head. I learned that when I stay present, I start to appreciate my surroundings. It's not every day I get to walk in a historic walled town in Wales. On to my last full day in Wales. The hotel offers complimentary breakfast, and I'm happy to see they have a vegan English breakfast. The breakfast comes with toast, beans, hash brown, tomato, mushroom, and even vegan sausage. It tastes quite meaty. I love their perfectly crispy toast. Today is off to a good start. First thing on the itinerary is Conwy Castle. I heard it's best to visit in the morning to avoid crowds. Conwy Castle, built in the late 13th century by Edward I during his conquest of Wales, is over 700 years old. It has eight massive towers, making it a striking fortress on the landscape. Originally, it was used as a military stronghold to establish English dominance over Wales. Today, it's not only famous for its history, but also for being one of the most haunted locations in North Wales. There is a legend called the Mermaid Curse tied to the castle. The story goes that during the castle's construction, some local fishermen caught a mermaid. Instead of releasing her, they kept her captive. Feeling angry and heartbroken, she cursed the castle, claiming that it would never find peace. Many believe this curse brought misfortune to the castle over the centuries. The castle was damaged after the English Civil War. The apartments were never used again. Yet, it seems the castle is still home to some spirits. People have reported seeing a ghostly monk wandering near the chapel and smelling a strong incense when he's around. There's also been sightings of a large man in armor patrolling the walls. Many believe the mermaid's curse is the reason why the castle is haunted, with spirits trapped inside its walls. I personally love this castle most out of all the ones I've visited so far. It just looks so epic. Its structure reminds me of the Fisher Price castle toy I used to play with as a kid, giving me a sense of nostalgia. I discovered a new love for medieval castles. Just look at my first genuine smile in Wales. I am truly happy to be here. Now I am going to have lunch. I decided to grab a mushroom and spinach sandwich along with a latte at this cozy little cafe. Next, I grabbed this strawberry jam donut from a popular bakery here. After satiating my stomach, I make my way to the smallest house in Great Britain. It only costs £1.50 to enter. The size is only about 180cm wide and 300cm tall. The last time it was occupied was over 120 years ago. It is now a quirky tourist attraction. I actually wouldn't mind living in a house this size. It looks very manageable, very cutesy. Now that I'm editing and looking back, I regret not buying any souvenirs, because I know I'll never come back to Wales again. It's time for my last dinner in Conway. Final dinner in Wales, back in my hotel. They serve seasonal menu, so what you see now might not be available anymore. I ordered their vegan arancini and katsu curry, and they both taste really good. They really put thought into the vegan dishes here. Afterward, I head out for my last evening stroll in Wales. I love how it's still so bright outside, even in the evening. It makes me feel safe. 
I walk along the marine walk enjoying the serene and peaceful view of the water. I had originally planned to hike Mount Snowdome today as a personal challenge, but with the streak of bad luck I've had recently, plus the high cost of the round trip taxi fare, I decided it's best for me to hang around near the hotel and save some money. I'm spending my last night in Conwy walking on the castle walls again. Honestly, I can't wait to get out of Wales, but I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss the castles. They're awesome. That is kind of spooky. My whole feet could fall in. This really reminds me of Attack on Titan walls. I feel like if I have the gear, I can just, you know, fly all the way to my hotel. So this is my last couple hours here in Conwy in Wales. After this, I'm heading to Liverpool. I'm so excited. I feel like Wales don't like me, like the country itself, because the bad things keep happening to me. I had no issue at Bristol and Bath until I got to Swansea. Swansea was not bad, it was just boring. But then Cardiff, that's when I experienced my first racist incidents in the UK. And then Conway, I was supposed to climb Mount Snowdon yesterday, but because of all the unfortunate events, I felt like it's a warning sign from the universe to not go hiking. I might get trapped or lost or die up on the mountain. So yeah, hopefully no more racist incidents or dangerous situation. Please universe, let me have a peaceful journey. It's time to check out now. I have to drag my 20 kilograms luggage down the stairs. After checking out, I still have a couple of hours left, so I spend the time to get something to eat and my caffeine fixed. I've been waiting for this day of departure since my first day in Swansea. And now that it's here, I'm filled with a bittersweet mix of emotions. This week has been a roller coaster, a journey of highs and lows that pushed me far beyond my comfort zone. As I reflect, I realized that the good moments outweigh the bad. The food was consistently good, and I remember the kindness of the coffee shop owner in Swansea, the lovely couple who runs the hotel in Cardiff, and the hotel intern in Conway who helped me carry my heavy luggage upstairs. I can castle wall one last time before I leave. Research have shown that humans are wired to remember the negative experiences more vividly than the positive ones. This is a survival mechanism known as negativity bias. But I believe it is important to snap out of it sometimes, shift our focus, and acknowledge the good. Positive experiences deserve more recognition, right? As I leave Wales, I carry with me a sense of accomplishment and a deeper appreciation for the journey. Life's challenges are often the ones that teach us the most. And sometimes, the most unexpected places become our greatest teachers. If you ask me if I could do it all over again, would I do it? The answer is... Absolutely not. Now let's see how much this week has cost me. I took the train from Bath to Swansea, two nights at Premier Inn, I mostly walked, only took the bus once from Bumble's Pier back to the city center. Except for the castle, every other places I visit was free. For Cardiff, of course the short train ride was much cheaper. Two nights at the budget hotel run by the sweet couple. Same like in Swansea, I mostly walked, only took the bus once. Besides the castle, everything else was free as well. I missed my first non-flexible train ride so I had to buy a second ticket to get to Conway. I stayed at a much nicer hotel, but breakfast was included, so I spent less on food and drinks. Total came down to less than 1,000 pounds for a week in Wales. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I'm off to Liverpool next, stay tuned! Don't forget to like and subscribe! See you!